Hello everyone, this is Patrick from Security and Privacy Academy and today we are talking about partial homomorphic encryption, so let's jump into it. First, what is homomorphic encryption? Homomorphic encryption allows computation on encrypted data without having to decrypt the data first. Um, some applications even allow the algorithm to stay hidden, even though this requires some, some additional work by the other party. Applications uh, of homomorphic encryption are most apparent when you think uh, of cloud computing. So imagine, for example, an encrypted bank account stored on a third-party cloud. You could manipulate accounts uh, without having to download the data and to encrypt it, to manipulate it. And it can happen directly on a potentially untrustworthy platform because the data stays encrypted the whole time. There is no encryption, there is no, no decryption rather, uh, and, and also no encryption. So it, everything happens uh, really fast, in theory. You could also save time um, by not needing to encrypt it, obviously. And other applications include privacy preserving medical analysis, encrypted, encrypted personalized advertising and so on. When uh, dealing with privacy preserving computation, which is basically the, the whole umbrella term for things like homomorphic encryption, zero knowledge uh, proofs, uh, differential privacy um, and so on, uh, secure, multi secure multi-party computation, everything kind of falls into privacy preserving computation method. Uh, when we deal with concepts um, like these, we have three large pillars. We first have the protection, so how well are my data protected, how well is my data protected. I do have performance, so how good does the method perform regarding runtime, efficiency and also utility. So what kind of computations am I able to achieve with the method? Building a, a Venn diagram. Who doesn't love Venn diagrams? Uh, we can see that uh, no method exists today that covers all three goals, so there's nothing in the middle. Um, however, we do have FHE, or fully homomorphic encryption, that protects data very well and offers universal utility, meaning I can compute anything I want with it. Um, however, the performance is not there yet. Uh, computations can take uh, even hours using uh, fully homomorphic encryption. Luckily, we have uh, partial homomorphic encryption, or PHE, uh, which is fast, also protects data, but I cannot compute everything I want to using PHE. Uh, therefore, I only have limited utility. And uh, partial homomorphic encryption, however, is the topic of today's video. So, PHE allows um, addition or multiplication, not both. So, we can do either or. It has a good performance, which separates it from fully homomorphic encryption, and it uses algorithms, concepts you are maybe already familiar with, um, namely LGML, RSA, or Paillet encryption. You might now ask yourself, so why do we care about addition and multiplication? Well, let me explain. First, let's look at bit-by-bit -bit addition, which is an addition model or two, a mode two, and we can see here the table on the left. Um, and if we look at multiplication here on the right, uh, we can see that's a bit by bit uh, multiplication. Uh, and if you look at these tables, you can probably already tell what operations we are actually performing. So these two operations, addition and multiplication, actually correspond to two logical Boolean operators, which are XOR and AND, which you can see here. So XOR and AND is a universal set. If I have a, 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 like, a like a constant one available as, in, as input, otherwise it's not universal. But if I do have a one, like uh, as, as input at every time at every time I want, then XOR and AND is a universal set. That means that any function can be constructed using only these two operations. Um, you can think of of, of, of of functions being represented as circuits, like a logical circuits that only uses XOR and AND gates, and, and the occasional one as input, 
in order to fulfill a certain operation. So you can basically do everything you want in a Boolean circuit using only XOR and AND gates. So to illustrate what I mean with that, and maybe to show you that it really is a universal set, um, let's look at the two bits, bit 1 and bit 2 again. So what happens if I XOR them with 1? Which, again, I need to have available, I need to have the 1 available. So I do have this new bit A here, which is bit 1 xor with 1, and that becomes uh, 1100. Zero, zero. Bit B, um, which is bit 2 xor with 1, becomes 1010. Zero, one, zero. So you can maybe see already uh, what kind of logical operation that is. And uh, you hopefully guessed correctly that's the not operator. So we're negating, so we're flipping bits basically with XORing anything with one. Uh, and if I have not, obviously I, I also have none uh, since I have AND uh, available. So we already have two more additional logical gates, basically. And uh, another example, let's assume we AND A and B. So we get a new bit C, which is uh, 1000. And if we XOR C with 1, meaning we flip all the bits, which basically the, the, the logical operator not, we get this result here, uh, 0111. Now, if we look at bit 1 and bit 2 again, we can see that the blue column now, this new column here on the right, represents another logical operation, which is, of course, the OR operator. So this was just to illustrate that XOR and is a universal set if I have the constant 1 available. Now let's look at um, homomorphic encryption, <laughs> why, why we're here in this video. So we will only cover the Al-Jamal algorithm in this video. Uh, the principle is the same for RSA and Payet, even though, it, even though Payet is a bit more complicated, uh, but, but more on that later. But uh, we will in this video only cover the Al-Jamal um, algorithm. Uh, now first look, uh, first let's look at how the key generation with Al-Jamal works on a very high level. I will just go through the through the algorithm. First we select a large prime, P, and an A, mode P. Then we randomly select a D between 2 and P minus 2. And we next calculate B um, uh, equals A to the power of D mode P. And that's it. That concludes the key generation with the public and private keys. Um, we will come back to these um, calculations, that's why I show them. So next, how do we encrypt um, using Aljamal? First of all, we select a, uh, a random integer, k. We calculate r equals a to the power of k mode p. And we calculate t, which is um, b to the power of k times m. M is, of course, the message we want to encrypt, mode P. Um, the encrypted message is now this tuple here of R and T. And to decrypt the message, we simply add the negative private key as an ex exponent uh, to R, multiply with T um, to get the original message. So you might think, okay, well, it's a video on, on homomorphic encry encryption, not on Al-Jamal. Um, but I only show this because it is important to understand why Al-Jamal is homomorphic to multiplication. And so let's look at how it works. First, remember that the decryption of the message is t times r to the power of minus d, which is the private key. Next, remember how t was constructed. So that's p to the power of k times m. So I leave out the mode uh, because in order to, to make things a bit more simpler. And uh, so, so R uh, was calculated as a to the power of k. So if we put these terms into our equation, we get this result. Now remember that b was constructed as a to the power of d, which if we put this into our equation, results in this term. So that's a to the power of d to the power of k times m, so the message, times a to the power of k to the power of minus d. 
you can probably already see where this is going, but we can make it a little bit more clear if, if we rearrange the equation and you can see that the A terms cancel each other out. So this is how the public and the private key in LGML decrypt encryption and decryption cancel each other out. This is how the whole scheme works. And because only multiplications have been used, this process is homomorphic to multiplication. That's the mathematical property of LGML algorithm, meaning that the message is not altered, altered in, this encrypt, in its encrypted form. Now, you might ask, well, what about additions? What about adding things? I mean, multipli multi multiplying is nice, but we need both. Well, um, that's 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 why it's called partial homomorphic encryption because we can't do both. Um, Algemal only covers multiplication, uh, and an addition of the of the encrypted message would break the homomorphism. However, addition can be achieved via Paillet encryption, which is a much more complicated concept. Uh, what I've which I've already um, touched on earlier and maybe subject of another video um, probably a bit longer than this one because it's a bit it's, it's um, yeah it's much more complicated than LGML and it works um, why does this work why can we uh, add encrypted um, well, ciphertext basically why can we do that uh, with Paillet because um, it works by using the encrypted message as an exponent um, thereby relaying the problem of addition to the easier to achieve multiplication as exponents when they are used in multiplications are added uh, as, as you probably know but you can also see here in this example uh, of a to the power of x times a to the power of y becomes a to the power of x plus y uh, so as i've said homomorphic encryption is fascinating uh, it is very very interesting it is there is still much to much to discover there's much to research and to make fully homomorphic encryption actually usable and actually runtime efficient. So um, hopefully uh, you became interested in the subject or you learned something new. And this concludes today's video. Thank you for watching. Um, tell me in the comments which topics you would like me to cover next. Like and subscribe to the channel and see you in the next video.